hybrid reptiles, mutants or genius? That's the debate really, right? Putting two animals together of a different species and creating something new. Today we're going to talk all about the five craziest hybrid reptiles. I'm Adam, you're watching Wicked's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. first what a hybrid reptile is and it's the same as any hybrid animal in my opinion so we're not talking about like a Labrador and a poodle mixed together uh, that's still a canine it's still the same animal I'm talking about something like a koi wolf where a coyote and a wolf make a baby or a liger where a tiger and a lion make a baby that's what I'm talking about so there's a lot of uh, ones that are kind of interesting still but more common right blood pythons with ball pythons for example ball bloods or blood balls or whatever that sounds uncomfortable but those ones are kind of more common I'm talking about the five craziest ones so let's start off number five Borneo bat eaters first of all coolest name right that's the coolest name even if it wasn't a hybrid I'd still include it on the list because it's so darn cool to say what Borneo bat eaters are, well, they don't really eat bats. Well, maybe they do, but that's not where they get the name. It's just a reticulated python, Burmese python. Put them together and you get a Borneo bat eater. And the first pe person to produce these, I'm not exactly sure. I know uh, Nerd produces these and I know Bob Clark produces these. I couldn't find the very first one when or who produced it. But it is a very cool animal and of course it's going to get pretty big. I think that goes without saying, right? Because reticulated pythons are huge, they get 20 plus feet and then Burmese pythons, usually not 20, but pretty darn big as well, up to 200 pounds anyway. So if you get the longest snake in the world and then one of the larger snakes in the pet trade and you put them together, you get something that's kind of in between. And from what I understand, it's almost exactly 50-50. They're really cool in that there's already a bunch of different morphs that are being produced, not even just normals, which kind of it happens all the time when you get uh, different animals and you put them together and now you want morphs of them. And I get that. The thing is too, a lot of people will debate, is it something that you should be playing God? And I don't want to bring religion into it. I think that's ridiculous uh, for a video like this, but just in general, is it ethical to put two species together and kind of make your own thing? I personally don't see a problem with it as long as it doesn't produce unwantables or uh, undesirable some would say in that uh, you're gonna have to cull a bunch of them because there's mutations or a lot of the times they're sterile uh, but that's neither here nor there from what I understand Borneo bat eaters do produce fertile babies which are not fertile babies but eventually they're gonna be adults who can reproduce with each other so you're kind of uh, making a new species really that could actually sustain itself and uh, from what I understand, in Florida, this is kind of happening without human intervention. Probably not a ton, and maybe that might not even be true, but just from what I read online, there's not a lot of information about this. It actually took me a long time to make this list, so I hope you enjoyed the rest of the video. Number five is Borneo Bat Eaters. Number four is one that I would personally think about getting, because I, I love both of the species, and it produces something that's of attainable size that is really cool, and that is... Burmese pythons or reticulated pythons cross with a ball python or a berm ball or retic ball or whatever fancy name you call it. But in general, what this is, is it's a reticulated python mixed with a bur uh, ball python or a Burmese python mixed with a ball python. And I know that I've seen in several areas and several uh, marketplaces that you can actually purchase a Burmese python with a ball python. Until I filmed this video, I didn't know that retics would also breed with ball pythons. I guess it makes sense, but I've never seen it before. Berm balls are cool. I mean, they get up to 10 feet usually from my research, right? So if you find something different, put it in the comment section below. I did as much research as I could. Um, but a 10 foot animal that is kind of the same type of temperament as a ball python and a Burmese python, which are both known for being very easy for handling it for the most part in terms of their uh, docile nature, especially ball pythons, that's pretty darn cool. Those animals really do have similar attributes and similar care requirements right Burmese pythons a little bit lower temperature of course and there are variables but those actually make sense to put together especially if you want something that looks like a ball python but is similar to a size of a Burmese python there you go and with this one I'm pretty sure nerd produced this one first from my research again don't crucify me if I'm wrong on this it, there it's really hard to find information about 
these things because it's such a hot topic in the eyes of people who are purists with breeding and I totally understand that as well. What do you think? Are you a purist? Put that in the comment section below. Now with these animals, I think this kind of goes with all of them, but if you're gonna have something like a ball python and a retic, I mean, obviously retic's gonna be way bigger. So you're not gonna put a male retic with a female ball python. I would not recommend that. I don't think that's ever been done. You'd always want the female to be the bigger animal and the male to be the smaller animal, just like with pythons anyway. Generally, that's how it's gonna be in nature, where a ball python and male is gonna be smaller than a female. Now let's move on to something that isn't a snake. Number three is tortoises, leopard tortoises, and so kind of tortoises, which I don't think have a designer name. Now these guys, I'm not sure what year it was, but they were produced by a reptile odyssey. Now, I didn't really know that these guys existed, to be honest, but after looking at their Facebook page and their website, very impressive stuff. Now, it's a little bit more complicated to breed anything that we're about to talk about that isn't a snake, um, and tortoises are no different. There's a lot more complicated biology going on, with a tortoise or a lizard than there is with a snake. Now you know that Sulcutta tortoises are in the top three biggest tortoises in the world. Leopard tortoises aren't super small by any means, but from what I understand, of course there's no way to tell the age or, uh, or the life expectancy I should say because tortoises are so long lived and this isn't uh, something that was produced 100 years ago. So there's no way to tell how long they're gonna live or how well they get along um, as they age, but from what I understand, these guys are fertile, they can make uh, babies, they can produce eggs, and they stay more the size of a leopard tortoise than a sulcata tortoise, just a little bit bigger, which is kind of interesting because you'd think it'd be somewhere in the middle, right? But it seems like they're closer to a leopard tortoise a lot than they are to a sulcata tortoise, and that's with most of the population that has been produced. The patterning also is just kind of like a muted leopard tortoise, which is why I don't think I have this as number one because it looks very similar to something else. Like you can look at it and think, ah, maybe that's just a weird looking sulcata or a weird looking leopard probably most likely. But it is really interesting and I wanted to include a tortoise on the list, but really that's kind of all I have for number three, not a ton of information. And the number two, craziest hybrid reptile in my opinion, Chihuahua geckos mixed with crested geckos. Also doesn't have a designer name that I know about. But this is so high on the list because although they do look similar, if you look at them, and the hybrid looks very much like a 50-50 split, I only find a few pictures of them. Uh, I'm not sure who produced them first or how long ago it was, but they do get right in the middle of the size from the research that I've done. So they're kind of in the middle of a Chihuahua and a Cresta Gecko, maybe a little bit closer to a Cresty, but they're gonna have similar temperatures and humidities. They do come from the same island after all. They're both New Caledonian geckos. And from what I understand, they do not grow their tails back. Uh, of course, that makes sense. And from the research I've done, they are sterile. They don't actually produce eggs or no one's been able to get them to produce eggs yet. So whether that's true or not, I'm not exactly sure. I imagine this hasn't been a decades long project, but it is very cool because the lizards to put together, a, a melange de lizard, if you will, is a lot harder than with snakes, which sometimes snakes in the wild, like colubrids, for example, do reproduce just on their own, right? California king snakes with milk snakes. A lot of the times you'll see that, or from my research, you'll see that those guys do produce in the wild just because they are kind of crossing paths, right? But with these tortoises, it's kind of a man-made intervention like most of the things on the list so far. You're not gonna see these guys in the wild just by accident. This is a human creation all the way. All right, so number one, the number one craziest reptile hybrid, in my opinion, boa condas. First of all, Sick name, super cool. But second of all, an anaconda and a boa constrictor. So cool. From what I understand, Colombian boas and anacondas are the ones they use to make this. And if you think about it, uh, anaconda kind of is a boa constrictor, technically, sort of-ish. So it kind of works, right? They're both live bearing, they're both not huge, but of course an anaconda gets much larger than a Colombian boa constrictor. So you're gonna see them closer to a boa constrictor size. And the pictures that I've found, like you're gonna be seeing here, look very cool. That looks like something that you've never seen before, which is what I think is cool about the bat eaters too, because they don't look like, ah, oh, well it's a smaller version of an anaconda or it's a bigger version of a boa constrictor. They look like a mix of animals. It looks like a hybrid. You look at it right away and think, what the heck is that, right? Crystal Palace Reptiles created this uh, hybrid reptile and from reading a little bit on forums about this animal, it's been a few years, I don't know exactly how long it's been, 
but they do get very chunky, right? So they don't get super long, longer than a boa constrictor, um, but they do get very chunky as well. And they've got a few, not morphs, but just different patterns and colorations because they are so different. An anaconda and a boa constrictor look completely different. What I would love to see is if it looked kind of like a anaconda, but then the tail looked like a boa constrictor, that would be super cool. It almost looked like Photoshop, right? But from what I understand, the tail and the body kind of seamlessly blend together. It's not like a boa constrictor where it's very different on the tail, the coloration and the pattern, but it's still super cool. Like, what do you think? If you had the option, would you get a boa anaconda, boa conda, and a boa? Well, there you go. Five of the craziest reptiles that are hybrids, in my opinion. There's lots more. Do your research. I wouldn't suggest going out and buying one of this and one of this and doing your best, right? I mean, it's really difficult. Yeah, like, you'd think that the easiest ones would be like an African fat tail and a leopard gecko. I've never heard of anyone producing those successfully. Or like a tricolor hognose and a western hognose. And I've never heard of So it's really interesting. That's why I think this topic is so different. And, um, well, I guess interesting to say that word again. Because you think, wow, oh, this is obvious. This would go with this. And then you see like a bat eater. That's crazy, right? Or an anaconda boa or whatever. So... What do you think? And in your opinion, what would be the coolest reptile hybrid that you could possibly make? And of course, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate that. And because I make videos twice a week, that means that I'll see you on Thursday.